Good afternoon, Bruce. I'm glad you could make it in today. Thanks for coming in. Nice to see you. Last week when you were in, you had come in because you had had a positive urine analysis test for marijuana. And so we were working on ways that you could cut down or extinguish marijuana use altogether. And how did you feel about our talk last week? Uh, it was okay, I guess. Yeah, just okay? Yeah. All right. Okay, so I want to refresh your memory. I've got my notes here. Do you mind if I refer to my notes? That's okay, yeah. Uh, we had developed four strategies to help you um, decrease the amount of marijuana, if not cut it off altogether. And one of the items were, was, were to run more. You used to run a lot and you like to run. And so we had realized that the marijuana use usage was merely a mask to self-medicate for the depression. But we also know that um, running ups the serotonin and in many cases is just as good as an antidepressant. So you were excited about this last week. So I'm wondering how you made up with the running last week. Well, it was raining out, so I didn't really get around to it. It was pretty cold, so yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't get around to it. And so, because of the rain and the coldness, it kind of took away from your, from your mood and your motivation to go running. Yeah, I wasn't in the mood. I'm wondering what you could have done to get in the mood. Um, uh, I'm not sure mm -hmm. what I could have done. Mm -hmm. And so. Because of the not exercising, did it make any difference in your marijuana usage this week? Yeah, I was, well, I used a bit more. Okay, okay. So how would you tie those two things together by not running? I think that it, it makes, when, when I'm not exercising, then it, generally I would turn to the more usage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you reflect back now on last week and the rain coming down and it was cold, I'm wondering if there's a way that you could change your perception about that such that it wouldn't stop you from running. What do you think? Yeah, I could probably change the perception about that. Uh, maybe wear a rain jacket or something. Mm -hmm. That would be a great idea. That would be an excellent idea. Some people even think that it's fun running in the rain oh. and the cold. Yeah. So that might, that might absolutely be an alternative. The other thing was to stay away from your friends that you, that you had considered bad influences with using the marijuana. How did you make out with that? Uh, well, I, I tried to stay away, but I didn't, I still saw some of them. So it was it was difficult to cut them out of your life last yeah, week. Yeah. And can you tell me more about what was difficult about it? Well, I just thought that they'd uh, think something badly of the. I didn't want them to think I'm, you know, avoiding them or anything. So you didn't. It sounds like you didn't want to hurt their feelings. Right. By them thinking that you were going to avoid them. Yeah. And. So as a result of this, what, what happened? Um, well, I just ended up going to see them and, and hanging out and, and uh, yeah. And so because you were worried about them thinking that you were trying to avoid them, you ended up using marijuana, is that correct? Yeah, we did, a little bit. Yeah. And I'm wondering how you could do that differently this week. Um, well, I could. I suppose I could just try harder not to go and, and see those guys. And and what would that involve? Trying harder not to go see them. Mm, I guess it's as simple as just not going. Yeah. Sometimes it is that simple. It's just making that commitment to yourself and just drawing the line, and. 
Do you have any friends that do not use marijuana that you could kind of associate with? Yeah, yeah, I do. I don't see them that often, but I could, uh, I could go and see them, start to see them more. Okay. How motivated on a scale of one to ten would you say you are to kind of reignite friendships with pe with people that don't smoke pot? Uh, maybe about a three. Okay. So you're still you're still a little iffy about you about whether you want to associate with those friends again. But I have to ask you, Bruce, what do you, what made you say three instead of one? Well, because I know I have a problem, so I feel like I need to. I think I should start doing something about it. I think that's great insight that you're able to see that moving towards the friends that don't smoke pot. And making the effort to do that is actually going to enhance your life incredibly. And when you associated with the friends that didn't smoke pot in the past, what kind of uh, things did you do? Uh, what was your life like? Uh, like with what kind of things, activities and things? That yeah. Did? Was it fun being uh, with them? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we just mostly uh, like doing some uh, like outdoor activities maybe and you know, like just sort of uh, get some fresh air kind of thing. Usually it's uh, not so, like you know, there's more, uh, they, they tend to do more uh, healthy activities I would say. So, yeah. so you can recall living a healthier life then and having fun outdoors and basically having a healthier life overall without yeah. using the pot. Yeah, I think I think that you're right. There, it could be a. It might take my mind off of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes it's good to remember having those good times with the friends that didn't smoke the pot because it makes you realize that you don't really need it. And mm -hmm. I think that's a great. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, the other item on your goal, I'd rather it's a goal, not an item, was to get a pet. Mm -hmm. How did you make out with? Go, and it was a dog. You were going after a dog at the SPCA. Yeah. And how did you make out with that? Well, I was. I really had a lot of second thoughts about it, and I was uh, worried about commitment and, and that kind of thing. So I just I didn't feel like that was the right the right idea. Mm. Okay. So you had some second thoughts about that. You were excited about it in last week's session, but after you had a chance to reflect upon it, you kind of realized that it wasn't, getting a dog was not the best thing for you. Well, there's a lot of, I think there'd be a lot of commitment and a lot of uh, time that I just don't have the motivation to, to be putting in. I think that's wise to recognize that right up front. I'm given the research on pets, any kind of pet, and um, how it helps people sustain from alcohol and drug usage, I'm wondering if there is another option that you might consider. Uh, maybe. Maybe. What, uh, what do you have in mind? I'm, I'm thinking, do you like pets that aren't, don't require such a commitment? Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, I didn't think about that. Cause a, dog like, is, uh, a dog is a large commitment. Yeah. Maybe, uh, you know, there's all kinds of animals there. Snakes or fish or something. Yeah. Snakes. Oh. <laughs> okay, snakes or fish. Um, that would definitely be a star. Are these animals that you like? Yeah. All right. And I think it's important that you have an animal that you like and that you can relate to. Hmm. All right. So, in the final goal was to find and join a support group for people that were trying to be abstinent from. Uh, marijuana. How did you make out with that? Well, I looked into it, but uh, I, like I went to the first, the first uh, meeting, and I just I felt like uh, like those people were bottom of the barrel, and I was just not. I just didn't fit in with with that crowd. I just I'm not where they are. I'm not in that place. So you made the effort to go, and you went. But that was I couldn't. I just didn't want to stay. And so you didn't stay the whole time. Right. And so you left early because you felt you didn't feel in, you, they were the bottom of the barrel and you're still yeah. higher functioning. Yeah. yeah, I can definitely understand that. I'm wondering 
if there is any purpose for you joining some sort of support group to help you. Yeah, what there, do you think? Um, yeah, I could see there could be some positive. Uh, like I, I, I just don't. I don't. I just don't uh, see it that much mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. And what might be some positives that you would get out of a support group? Um, well, I would. Uh, I would um, probably be able to relate to people um, in the same kind of situation. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's it's just a positive to be able to uh, you know have have connection with uh, with people like that. I don't, I'm not sure. So you're you're saying that the the positives of being in a support group would be that you'd get a chance to relate to other people who are on that same journey and to have connections with other people. And again, I can send you information that will show you that that just these two items alone are incredibly helpful for not only decreasing or being abstinent from pot, but from increasing the, the feel-good hormones in your body, the connection and the relating to other people. And it might be similar, when you were younger, you had mentioned last week that you were a hockey player. And so uh, you had support that was sort of like a, the team was sort of like a support group. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could relate to people and had connections. I'm wondering if you could see a support group as a team. Yeah, it would probably be the same kind of situation. Like, essentially, uh, people in a support group are all there for the same goal. So it's kind of like in hockey where everybody's there to, there to win. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and do you remember when you were playing hockey how it felt to be encompassed in that team? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It gave, and that's because of those good feeling hormones that come, and neurotransmitters that come throughout your body mm -hmm. when you have those connections. Yeah. So how committed do you think you are? If I were to send you a list of support groups, so you could try out some others, where there weren't the bottom of the barrel, as you say, there. How committed do you think that you would be trying out at least two of them this coming week? Uh, probably eight, eight out of ten. Eight. Yeah. Wow, what made you say an eight rather than a four or five? Well, just the team analogy, I think, is a good analogy. Mm, so you thought of how you remembered you remembered how you felt when you were on the team and how it gave you that sense of connection. Yeah, and also, you know, I don't have to be the... Uh, I mean, if, if, you, if I think of it as a team, maybe I would be like the star on the team because I'm not quite so bottom of the barrel, maybe. I'm I love that <laughs> analogy. Good thinking. Yeah. Good thinking, Bruce. That's excellent. Wow. Well, just to summarize today, you came in, you had made some progress, but you had some stumbling blocks. Um, you have decided that whether it's rain or shine, you're going to run anyway because you're going to have, you have a raincoat. Yeah. And you're going to embrace more of your positive friends rather than the friends that are not uh, such a good influence on you and getting a pet rather than getting a dog. Mm -hmm. You're going to look into getting a snake or a, what was the other thing? Or oh, a fish. fish. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of a support group, I will send you a list of support groups and you feel that on a, a scale of one to 10 that you're about an eight mm -hmm. and actually carrying through and trying out two of these support groups yeah. because of the hockey team analogy. Great mm -hmm. job. So overall, how would you rate today's session? It was good. Very good. And if we were to put it on a scale again, 1 to 10? It was about an 8. About <laughs> an 8. All right. We did good then if we did an 8. Yeah. Glad you came in today, Bruce. And I will see you next week and check up. And we will, we will see how you did with these goals. And then we will move forward from there. All right. Way to go. Thanks. All right.